Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, I'm Tom. A few years ago, I started making 3D creatures and bringing them to life with small animations. Whenever I start a character, I think what could drive this character. For example, a turtle that wants to get from A to B quickly. Or an ostrich that really wants to fly. It is at these points that I start to think, okay, what can enable my character to achieve their goals? I usually just use Blender and Substance Painter for my workflow. But for this project, I integrate Reillusion's Character Creator and iClown into my workflow to see how they can help me. I start with the silhouette and build the one of the real animal. This way I can play with the real shape and not lose the reference. Then I rearrange the body parts until I like the shape. So I don't follow any fixed rule, but simply pay attention to the silhouette and the message of the body. The shape of my ostrich should be directed upwards. Therefore, I have generally given the body of the shape of a triangle which is only slightly broken up by the backpack. As soon as the frigate is modeled, I export it to Substance Painter. First I look what materials are in the character. Metal, plastic or it is a fabric. Based on that I give the model the base structure. Then I switch to the diffuse layer to concentrate only on the color. After the figure is modeled and textured, I start the animation process. For this I still have to rig the character. I use Character Creator's AccuRig for this. I start the process by clicking AccuRig and then I create guides. Now the joints of my ostrich are automatically detected and marked. I look at the character from all angles to make sure the marks are in the right place. If all markers are placed correctly, I start with the hands. I click on the hand icon to automatically move the camera over the hand. Then I move the facial bones to the correct positions so that I can define the skin weights in the next steps. Now I click on Bind Skin to complete the rigging process and start the automatic weight painting. I check the auto weight painting with check animation. I use a neural idle there to check if all vertex are connected correctly. I use skin weights to blur and refine the area that distorts my model. And just like that, the body of the creature is completely rigged. Now we can switch to Blender and import the ostrich. I use the in front option in the rigging tab to make sure the bones are shown on top of my model and now go into the edit mode. I change the position of the bones and add some everywhere where I want to deform the face. After all the bones are added, I start the weight painting. First I selected the desired area in edit mode, then I switch to weight painting mode and activate the painting mask option. This way the gradient tool affects only within the selected area. Meanwhile I check the result again and again to see small errors directly. Since I only weight painted the body of my ostrich via Agaric, I still have to process the space suit of the ostrich accordingly. For this I use the data transfer modifier which allows me to transfer data from one model to another. As soon as I activated Vertex Group under Vertex Data and click Generate Data Layers, the clothes receives all Vertex Groups from the ostrich. After this, repeat the step for all clothes elements. Next is my final step of making my character completely animatable inside iClone, the face expressions. To start with the face expressions, I export the model again. This time I'm using the export button 
and the FBX option Mesh and Expression Sequence. I import the model into a new Blender file and check the keyframes and empty shape keys created by Character Creator. The shape keys are named and also keyframed, so we can see which face expression is currently to be animated. After I've finished an expression, I save all bone position and rotations. Then I jump to the next keyframe and start with the next expression. This way I generate all the face expression needed to make my character talk or show emotions. In the last step I export the model again as FBX and switch back to Character Creator. By clicking FBX with frame sequence I import the face expression. Afterwards the face expression can be tested using the slider or an animation directly from the content manager. Hi there, I'm a digital character created with Character Creator. And as you can see, I can act, talk and have lively expressions. I look forward to being part of your upcoming animation works. Before I switch to iCloud, I import my Arsenal helmet and add it to my character. At this point, I will add the spring bounds and close elements inside Character Creator. For this, I select my model and go to the tab Modifier Spring Bones. After clicking, the bone window appears and I will select the bones that I want to mark as spring bone. Then I set the weight, strange and bounce accordingly to the individual elements. For the neck area, I use also a simulation that adapts to my animation. Here I use a close simulation. I use a texture based on the UV of the clothes which marks the areas that should be simulated as clothes and adds this texture in the Edit Weight Map window within Character Creator. This way I can concentrate on the main animation and meanwhile iClone creates a dynamic simulation. Then I click to Send to iClone. This automatically opens iClone and imports my character. Within the plant animations I want to move the helmet from one parent to another, so I change its constraint from attach to linkage. This allows me to assign a different parent to the helmet within the animation. Now I start to create the first animation. Mostly I use the edit motion layer window. This is a simple UI that allows me to touch and move the character. After I've created the start and end points, I put a frame in the middle that shows the contrary movement. Then I add more keyframes that break up and disrupt the previously linear path. For my ostrich I want to add several flight animations, all based on the idle animation. For this I copy the idle animation and add an extra animation layer to it. On this layer I can now animate movements that are calculated on the already existing movements. Within the Edit Motion layer window, I can also edit and animate the hands with simple UI. I also wanted to animate the front shield using spring bones. But because of the strong movements, I decided to animate the front shield with a bone animation. So I first animate the figure to see the movements to which my front shield has to adapt. Then I look to the extreme movements within the animations and rotate the front shield accordingly. For this I use the Edit Motion Layer window as I did before the body animation. Besides the possibilities Acolypse gives me, I use the Face Puppet tool to animate the face directly. In summary, the tools that Character Creator and iCloud gives me to bring my characters to life are a good addition to my current workflow. Hello? Can you hear me? <sighs> yes. I wanted to be the first ostrich in space. <laughs> they all laughed at me for this dream. They told me, an ostrich isn't able to fly on Earth. Why should he go up to space? This beautiful starry sky caught my attention. I wanted to see all of them just flying forever. <laughs>